there we go. So this time we'll start with Rhino, right? And as I mentioned before, I'll, I'll be doing a, a, a sculpture that's somewhat long and uh, it's made out of, uh, let's say, six um, lofts. So for that, I will be using, actually, let's go to perspective view. For that, I will be using, for now, the straight lines, right? From here, uh, from, from point zero, and uh, uh, the, the length of the straight lines are going to be 100, 100 millimeters. Right. Something like that. And then I will just, uh, mm, how do we do this? Let's do it one by one, one loft after the other, right? So I will just take this line and copy it, holding down the Alt key, clicking on the gumball, Z direction, I'll copy it up by, uh, let's say four uh, millimeters, like that. Right? So we just have two straight lines, one on top of each other. Uh, between them, we have four millimeters. Um, to introduce complexity, before we even start lofting, to introduce complexity, what I can do is I can rebuild the curves, right? Uh, to, to give them more control points. Because right now, if I hit F10 or if I type in points on, I can see that it's only the endpoints that I have, right? So if I just select these two, two curves and type in, uh, yeah, and type in rebuild, I can give them a certain point count and a certain degree. So again, to repeat it, uh, the point count is how many control points you'll have. That's easy. Degree can be one, two, or three. It can be four, five, or six as well, but it, it doesn't make absolutely no sense to use it now um, because all of those are like only mathematical. Like you, you, you usually, for, for geometry, you just use one, two, or three. Uh, degree one, degree two, degree three. So degree one is uh, either straight lights, line segments or polylines with sharp corners. Degree two is arcs. So a, a bunch of arcs connected to a, a chain of, of arcs or... Mm, Alternatively, it can be a circle, for instance, is also a degree two uh, curve. And then you have degree three, which is a NURBS curve, right? A, a NURBS curve, which is controlled through polygons, uh, polygons, through control points, right? So in this case, most of the time we use degree three, unless you need jagged edges, then you use degree one. Degree two is a little bit awkward to use, so we don't do that. In this case, degree three, uh, chat, what does the chat say? Yes, 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 yes. So, um, point count, let's go for five. Uh, we can increase the point count later. And degree three, hit okay. And then select these two guys, either hit F10 or uh, type in points on. And then you have much more control points, right? So I will not be messing around with the, the curve that is at the bottom. I will be just changing the control points of the curve that is, uh, that is on the top, right? So I'll just take... Uh, two points which are um, at the end of the curve. And I will, I don't know um, what to do with it. Let, let, let's see. Okay, I will move them up by four again, right? So I have something like this. I will move them to the side um, along the y-axis by, uh, well, let's do four as well, by four again. Something like this. Uh, 
and then I will take the, 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 the center point of my curve, the center control point, and I'll move it down by minus three. Uh, by minus, not minus three, by minus four. So if you already moved it, just move it more by minus one. Something like this. Okay, that's good. We have, uh, we have one, uh, one curve done. Then I will take this curve. I'll just give you like 10 seconds to, to, to catch up. Then I will take this curve and I will copy it along the y-axis by, I don't know, uh, the four again. Something like this. And then I will play around with the control points of this copied curve again. So uh, feel free to do whatever you want, right? Um, don't go overboard with it. Be, you know, make it a little bit calm, but uh, yeah, just, just move the control points around in a control, controlled matter, meaning always have the same step size of, you know, um, two millimeters or something like that. So I'll just be moving two endpoints by two millimeters upwards. And maybe this one can go up by six millimeters, something like that. Maybe this can go up by two. Mm -hmm. And this one perhaps can go to the side by four. No, more. Four more. Okay. So I just <clears throat> created these three profile curves, right? Um, I will just test it out to see how it looks and see if I want to change anything about it, right? So I will just select the first two curves uh, that I have created and I'll just type in loft. Style normal, just hit okay, right? I have something like this. And then I'll select the second pair of curves and type in loft again to create the second surface. Okay. So here, for instance, I see that the angle is not that nice. Um, wait, let me turn on Photoshop to just explain it better. Print screen. Photoshop, new file, okay, there we go. So, right. come on, it's, there we go. Uh, so in this case, after lofting, I can see that, well, this angle is kind of okay, uh, like just, just from, architectural standpoint. But this angle is a little bit awkward, right? Uh, co comparing it to the, you know, to where the ground is. This, this kind of a angle is a little bit, not, not, not that nice, right? So, so I want to change that angle to be, uh, for instance, something like this, right? To, to the opposite side rather than here. So I'll th then I'll, just come back to Rhino, delete my lofts, take the curves, grab those two control points, and just move it to the opposite side by four, uh, by eight, I don't know, by eight millimeters. So minus eight, right? So now it's on the opposite side. 
like that. And I can loft it again. Mm -hmm. That's better. So it's a little bit nicer now. Then there is one more thing, right? So um, here I've, I've, I've done, done this part, right? Uh, where I've kind of changed that, the angle of this, uh, let's call it facade, but it's, it's not a facade, of, of this face, right? I've changed the angle so that it's tilting uh, like so. Right? There is one more thing. This bottom line is just a straight curve which uh, doesn't make any sense. And I, I, I want to have some sort of a variation in it, right? I want it to make a bend. So all I need to do is delete the lines again. And here I will just grab the center, the center point of this curve and kind of push it inwards uh, in a controlled way. So I'll push it inwards by four uh, millimeters and then loft again, and it should be okay, right? So we're kind of playing around with the shape uh, by doing this. Um, and notice how, and I'm doing it purposely, right? So, so that I, I do a loft and I don't like it and I delete the loft and I, then I redo it. I'm doing it purposely. And this is uh, for me to show you that in Grasshopper, you can do it in a bit more nice way. So if I go to, if I type in Grasshopper, let me wait for it to load up. I can get rid of that constant deleting of the, 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 the lofts and relofting. So speaking of which, let me delete the lofts <laughs> like that. And I can, well, there are many ways of how to do it. And there is one really clean way and the other one, which is not that clean. Um, and we will be doing it in a non-clean way, just so that it's extremely clear for you guys what's going on. And also it will just cost us like, uh, I don't know, two extra minutes to do. So, so that's fine. Uh, because <clears throat> if you're working in a um, messy, let, let's call it messy way, you don't need to, usually you don't need to worry about uh, data structures. You just usually have more nodes going all over the place. If you're working in a very clean way, then you need to deal with data structures, which is a pain in the ass to work with uh, once you're, when you're starting off with Grasshopper. Uh, so we'll do it in a clean way, uh, uh, in a dirty way. I will reference these curves into Grasshopper one by one, meaning that I will create three components in Grasshopper, uh, three empty curve containers in Grasshopper. Curve, and you can just create one and copy, paste, Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, just to have three, um, three components here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, not three. In this case, two. Um, whoops, <laughs> two components of of, of curve. Okay. And then I will, for, for these two components, I will reference in the lofts, uh, not the lofts, sorry, the, the, the pairs of curves which are used to create lofts, right? So for the first uh, curve uh, component, I will just set multiple curves and I'll choose the first curve that we've done and the second curve that we've done and hit enter. And then for the second curve component, in Grasshopper, I will also set multiple curves. And here uh, I will set the second curve that we've done and the third curve that we've done, right? So both of these components have pairs of curves. 
which means that then we can simply in Grasshopper use loft on these pairs and, and just create these surfaces in Grasshopper. And it is, um, honestly for me, this is not enough, uh, you know, to, to be able to model things um, because I don't see the, uh, what you call it? Give me a second. You don't see the curvature that, that well, right? Because it's slightly transparent and so on. The lofts, I mean, are slightly transparent. So I will use, uh, first of all, I'll use custom preview for the lofts. And actually I can use it for both of them, right? So if I hold down the shift key, uh, I can connect two, two lofts to one custom preview input like that. And I'll, I won't bother with uh, the, the, the material, the bubblegum pink by default is fine. Um, so that's one thing, but still the curvature is not that great. It's not that easy to see how everything is curving. So I will be uh, introducing, let me check one thing, UV, uh, is there a, I'll just quickly check one thing. Maybe it's going to be easier for you guys to use that. I just don't remember where it is. Ah, crap. No, analysis. Curvature. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, come on. It's still early for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I forgot where it is. Doesn't matter. We'll use a different method, um, which is also quite, quite useful. So, oh, by the way, uh, before we, we do that, um, if I, uh, holding down the control key, disconnect the custom preview, uh, from both of the lofts. Usually I don't do, uh, I don't use shift key uh, to connect many things into one input. Usually I use a tool that's called, or a node that's called merge. Merge. And then I plug in my uh, lofts into the merge, D1 and D2 and connect the merge to my custom preview. It is exactly the same thing as if I was uh, simply connecting, um, as simply connecting the both lofts into preview with shift, only now I know for a fact that uh, the first loft in the list uh, is the top one and the second loft in the list is the bottom one. Oh, right, right. Uh, that's also uh, 10 minutes left. Uh, there is a problem with buying a pro version right now of Zoom because everyone is buying it <laughs> and the system is overwhelmed. I'm still waiting for, for the, 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 the pro version to be enabled on, 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 on my account. So we'll need to deal with it. Hopefully throughout today, uh, I will get the pro version, but for now we will need to do those kind of a, every 40 minutes, I will call you back. Anyway, <clears throat> um, and notice how the more nodes we put in here, the darker the pink gets. <clears throat> That's because it's showing, um, it's not just showing the pink color, but it's also showing all of the geometry that was before. We plugged it into the custom preview. So I will just select all of it, accept the custom preview, and disable the 
<clears throat> disable the preview of the selection. Yep. Now on to curvature. In, uh, there is a tool in Grasshopper which is called Contour. Create a set of BREP or mesh contours. That is exactly the same contour as uh, uh, you have in Rhino, right? So contour. It asks you for four things. First one is shape to contour. And that is going to be both of our lofts, right? So I will just plug in the merge <clears throat> output into the contour S input, like that. Then it asks us for contour starting point, and by default it's set to be zero zero zero, and uh, we're we're okay with that. Uh, we won't change it. The next one is it asks us for contour norm normal direction. So it's basically you describe the the direction towards which it's going to make all of those contour sections, right? So in this case, contour normal direction is set to be z uh, like upwards but we don't want it upwards we want it to be in well in my case uh, look at my screen uh, here in my case i want the contours to go i want the contours to go like this right through my shape which means that um, here is my x direction, right? Which means that I want my contours to go backwards in x, which is negative x direction, right? In your case, if you have a rotated model, it might be, you know, your y direction or it might be your uh, negative y direction. Uh, but, you know, just check it out. Um, okay. So in my case, it's negative X. To do that, in Grasshopper, um, I will just, wh where it says direction, oh, where it says normal, uh, normal direction, N, input, I will just plug in X, like this, connected and then as a factor I'll be using a number that is minus one so I'll just type in slash slash minus one enter it just creates a panel with a number minus one in it so the shortcut is slash slash uh, to, to create a panel and then we have the last input that we have is distance. So what's the distance between contours? And I'll be using something like uh, distance one. I don't know. Yeah, that, that seems good. So just a slider saying distance one. And then I have my contours. So this is going to be enough for me to, to be able to kind of see how everything is bending and how the shape looks like. Right. So now the, the nice thing about it is, uh, okay, I was, you know, showing you it in Photoshop and so on, but you can imagine that once you kind of know what to do, uh, this takes like what, uh, 20 seconds, 30 seten uh, seconds to set up. And then every time when I need to change the curve and I don't need to reloft it to see the output. I'm saving time, right? So this is the strength of Grasshopper, which means that now I can kind of say, well, this curve right here, I actually wanted these two control points <clears throat> to be, let's say, to the side by minus uh, eight, like that. And it will immediately update um, you know, the, the, the shape according to what kind of uh, curve I'm using. 
right? So now, um, oh, I know, uh, since this is a, a good place to, to do the recalling thing, let me um, stop the recording. Uh -huh. um, so now, um, as I have everything here set up, I will be just making a copy of this uh, top curve to the side by, I don't know, like four millimeters or something like that to just be able to create a third loft, right? So I just have a copy of, 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 of the top curve um, on the side. And then uh, to create the third loft, all I need to do is create a new curve container in Grasshopper, set multiple curves, ah, and, and select the two, um, the two top curves that I have now, the third and the fourth curve. So set those up, create a loft between them, and connect that loft into a merge. Like this. So now I have my third loft. And I can continue messing with it, right? <clears throat> so which means I can uh, take the control points and I can move them down, like minus eight. I'm just moving the middle down to minus eight. And I'm, uh, don't even need to see grasshopper now. Um, and I'm going to take, I don't know, like these two control points on the side and move them, hmm, maybe move them along the Y direction by four, something like that to make it bigger. Maybe also move them down by minus two, something like this. Yeah, that seems good. Once I'm done, I just hit escape to get rid of the control points and I have my, my third uh, surface, right? And I will be doing, doing it once more. So in this case, um, I will just take the, 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 the curve that is in the bottom, the first curve, and I'll just make a copy of that one to the side by, let's say 12, units, something like that, because I want the, the last curve that I will have to be flat. I know that uh, at the start of the tutorial, I said we'll, we're going to do six surfaces, but in, eh, I'll just do four. And if you want to do six, you can later on. So I'll repeat it, repeat the same thing in Grasshopper for this new pair of curves that we have for the last uh, for the fourth loft so i'll just select the well i'll just create an empty uh, curve container crv right click set multiple curves select these two guys create a loft plug it in connect it to the merge And we have our uh, fourth curve, which you can see it's right now a little bit, like the form is a little bit wonky. So I want to fix that. Um, I will just be moving that curve backwards by like two mirrors, maybe even more, maybe two more. Minus two, yeah, something like that. And I'll just be playing around with the, uh, with the control points of this curve. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Perhaps this one can bulge out. Mm 
like that. And this one can go inwards by minus four. Not minus four, minus two or something like that. So we end up with a shape, right? And the nice thing is that I can always come back to these curves and kind of change uh, the control points of any curve and it's going to automatically update the shape for me. But now um, there is one more thing that, uh, not one more thing, but now let's say you like the shape, you know how it looks like, and you want to continue, uh, like you want to move on uh, working with that shape. Uh, so then there is, uh, then you need to bake it out back into Rhino and, and kind of continue working with it. Uh, so to bake out all of the surfaces at once, I will be using, uh, well, all of my surfaces, like four surfaces are in the result of the merge, right? The output of merge contains all of my four surfaces. Uh, and I will use brep join, brep join, not mesh join, brep join, to join them up into one poly surface, right? And I will be baking out that poly surface. Bake, so you right click on it, you choose bake, you choose the layer, you hit OK, and kind of move it to the side a little bit. So you have it baked now. Right. So this is the shape that we, that we have. Not great, not terrible. Um, the next thing to do is taking care of these corners, right? So, so in, 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 in architecture, you usually don't have uh, extremely sharp corners. Well, you, you kind of do, but in this kind of architecture, usually have a little bit more rounded corners, just so that um, everything that is very sharp in architecture tends to De degrade faster over time, right? Crumble and so on. Uh, everything that is rounded has less, you know, incline, not incline, uh, don't know the word for it, but uh, crumbles less. <laughs> um, a tool that will take care of the corners is called fillet, fillet edge in Rhino not in Grasshopper, in Rhino. Fillet edge, enter. And before we start selecting the edges, we need to choose what kind of radius we will have for the fillet. So we can choose it by, uh, I can't see. You just move it. Let me do that again. I, they stick together. Oh, so <laughs> if you take, okay. If you have it like that and you just casually select, uh, select it all and just move it to the side, you're not just moving the BREV, but you're using, uh, you're moving all of the curves together with, with your baked geometry which means that, uh, you know, that the, the lofts are going to be created, you know, you know the, the, the lofts are being moved as well. So you just, instead of just selecting it uh, all, just click on the BREP and just move that one out. And then it, 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 it will work. 
Okay. So uh, back to fillet edge. Fillet edge, enter. And where it says next radius, we need to specify uh, the radius. Right now I'm drawing everything in millimeters and I know that my building length is, well, I keep saying building, uh, sculpture. My sculpture length is 100 millimeters, right? Uh, so let's think of it as something that would be done at a scale of one to a thousand. So it's a hundred meters long thing. I don't know. Um, so if I choose my next radius to be one, it's as if uh, this guy was a hundred meters long and we had rounding of one millimeter, uh, sorry, of one meter, which is, I think, fine, but just for uh, clarity, let me change the next radius. If I click on it, let me change it to 0 0.75. I don't know, like 75 centimeters um, or uh, 0 0.75 millimeters in this case. And then I will just click on the interior edges of my b -rep, right? So this edge right here, this edge right here, and this edge right here. So these three edges, right? I select those, I hit enter, hit enter again, and you end up with, with a filleted geometry. That uh, happens, Daniel, because, no, that's, that's usually because the students don't listen. Um, <laughs> to do what I say. <laughs> fillet edge, not just a fillet, but fillet edge command. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the trick. A simple fillet uh, only works between curves. A fillet edge only works on a joined uh, poly surface, uh, on, on joined poly surface edges. Okay, um, so, so first of all, uh, do, do you know how to share your screen, uh, Frey? Okay, so share your screen. Um, and then as you're sharing your screen, oh, okay, uh, boom, 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 stop sharing, okay. So share your screen. Right. I might as well unmute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go uh, uh, right. So let's see. Um, so I suppose I could just check that. Whoop, whoop. Right. So oh, I made two versions. Um, and let's see. So here's the first one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if it's like somewhere along here that it breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, or if it's in the uh, in the back. Yeah, it's something a little bit wonky. Um, so I I don't know if it's because it has like flip somewhere, but then I made this one instead. Mm -hmm. Give me a remote control. There we go. I click to start the mouse. This is going to be very wonky. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this is. So now I am taking over your computer and it's not, I, oh my God, this is <laughs> lagging so bad. Okay, I'm gonna be slow at this. Um, so something happens here, like in, in, in this instance. Huh? Yeah. So I guess I could just like split with that new shape, but I, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's like, it feels like an unnecessary step. Well, uh, that, sh that shape, this, this guy right here is bending like, like crazy in the middle. So yeah. there's something funky. Okay, fillet edge, um, next radius, let's see something larger, like one, like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shush. Um, like that. Eh. 
Oh my God, no, preview. <laughs> preview, yes. Um, enter. Uh huh. For so some reason. It's twisting. Yeah, it's twisting. I have an idea. Um, rebuild UV. Let's see. Select surfaces. So this guy and this guy, I just want to see. Hmm. And it won't help if like you flip one of the edge or one of the surfaces. It might. Um, but we can kind of test it out. So, so it's not grasshopper for sure. I, I wonder why, why is that happening? Could it be that, oh, it might be one thing. Oh, uh, wait, am I lagging? Do you want me to maximize the screen? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da. Oh, I have the control panel in the way. So there you go. Oh, okay, so so it's not uh, crap. It's not showing. Um, it, it it crashed. The the screen crashed for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's super. Record. Minimize that. Go to here. There we go. So back here, uh, you can't have very chat. That's fine. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Anyway, um, you can't have a very sharp corner with a very uh, low, like a, a, a very small surface because the fillet will not fit. So think of fillet as something, fillet edge as something that needs to fit. Um, in between your two surfaces, right? If it's a sharp corner and a small surface, it will, it will not fit. Second thing is if you have one surface like so and the other surface like so, and you want to fillet an edge between those two surfaces, it will not work. It will, uh, it, it will fail, right? So you always need to have some sort of an angle between the two surfaces, right? So it always needs to be some sort of an angle between the surfaces. Uh, as long as you're within these two restrictions, it should work quite, quite well. Um, with that kind of method of fillet edge, you can't have um, two sections. Uh, let me... Let me do this, shift F5, okay, switch. Um, so you can't have a surface that's doing this. Right. Oh. Like that, like that, grab that, kind of clear that, and then here, clear that. So this is in 3D, a, a very poor 3D, but it, it is in 3D. Uh, so you can't have a, a, a surface that is, that is doing something like this, right? Uh, it, it will not... Uh, it will not work, right? Uh, where where you have this is called a, a convex. Um, yes, this is a convex uh, angle or, or or a convex corner, and this is called a concave corner. The the the, the back side of it, right? If if you have something like that, the fillet will really freak out. And uh, there is a way of how to solve it. It's just um, it's it's much much harder. Uh, to, to solve it. So what I mean by that is if I were to do 
something like this, you know, where here the roof is bulging upwards, while here the roof is going downwards, it will not work. It will start breaking. So it either always needs to be uh, going up or needs to be, always needs to be going down, right? That's an important, uh, important thing. Let me try and come back to the original. Mm -hmm. And this guy here for something like that. So, um, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, finicky, but everything is, you know, it's, it's, it's all geometry, right? So you can't, if it's impossible to make certain geometry in a certain place, you can't force Rhino to do it, right? You, you, you need to change the geometry so that it's, it's possible to do it. Uh, so in my case, I will just do fillet edge, and I'll use radius of one for this, this, and that edge here. And there is one, one thing to check. Um, and that is called EMAP. EMAP. Okay. Select, uh, it asks you to select object. So I select my object, I hit enter. And then I can check uh, the continuity of, of my geometry. Because when you look at, um, uh, when you're looking at just a Rhino model, it's very hard to see whether or not, you know, it's, it's a smooth corner because Rhino gives you so much, you know, line information uh, all over the place. So you can't really, uh, you can't really see how smooth the corner is and you know do you like the the radius uh, and so on um, or, or would you like to, it to be bigger or, or smaller or whatnot um, so that's emap there is one more thing that i can show you and it's let's say um for some of you, the center edge was problematic. It didn't work, right, uh, with fillet. The central edge just messed up. Uh, or, or not necessarily the center edge. So one of the three edges, when we try to fillet edges, messed up. So what we can do is we can select our shape, type in explode, and separate it to the side or uh, be between the two edges, uh, be uh, sorry, we, we separate the shape into two parts along the edge that messed up. And then we select it back and type in join. So now we have uh, two poly surfaces here and here with a gap be between them, right? Which means I can, uh, I can create uh, geometry in between those two surfaces. And I can do that by using a tool that's called Blend SRF, Blend Surface. I just select, uh, I type in Blend SRF. I select my first edge. I select my second edge. I hit OK. And I have a surface in between my two edges. <clears throat> Or, or my two shapes. And then all I need to do is just join them up, join everything back up into one, uh, into one shape, EMAP, select my shape, enter, and you can see a smooth transition, right? Uh, blend SRF.
for something like this, um, environment map, which is said to be arches is fine. But if you want to be, <laughs> it's not metallic, it's uh, emap. <laughs> emap. Uh, that's a command. And then you need to select it and hit enter. Well, I guess it is metallic, but it's not the point. Uh, the, the point is looking at uh, the continuity of, 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 of the geometry. So you can see here, I didn't fillet this edge and you can immediately see uh, you know, a sharp break between the, 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 the two surfaces. For instance, if I were to choose, uh, instead of arches, for environment map, if I were to choose a true sphere, this becomes even more evident. You know, these stripes, they just break, right? But let me close the emap and use fillet edge on this and this, and then use, uh, emap again ah yeah uh, that sometimes happens if this happens it's it's still fine i mean yes it looks funky but it's still fine okay so i can't show it with true sphere but arches though will will work perfectly and you have different kinds of uh, emaps here to choose from and to check out but usually i just use either arches or true sphere, uh, sometimes fluorescent tube as well. But you need to kind of know what you're what you're looking at to be able to use the fluorescent tube map. Mm. Goldie. <laughs> um, No, uh, you need to bake it out. You can, uh, for, for Grasshopper, you can um, create a, fa a fancier material here in the preview. Uh, for instance, in the custom preview. So for instance, I can uh, say, uh, how is that called material? I'll just type in material. Yeah, create material. Um, I can use create material node here. Plug that one in. Let me hide some stuff. So this is, uh, let me close a bunch of these. So this is create material node, right? And here I can kind of start um, changing the, where was it? The shine of the material, right? Zero is no shine, a hundred is maximum shine. So I can give it a hundred shine and it's not working. Why is it not working? Is it because we are not in Arctic? What the? It just doesn't care. Hmm. Okay, no, you can't. <laughs> Apparently shine stopped working. That is very strange. Works for you. Uh, good for you. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Uh, anyway, uh, usually for, for Grasshopper, you don't deal with these things. Um, EMAP, the, 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 the the way emap is used, the reason for that tool to exist in the first place is not to make uh, is not to make the shape look nice. So it's it don't don't consider it um, a rendering. You know, like I want to look at my shape so that I I want to look how nice my shape is. Right? It's not that. It is to check. Uh, where is it? Arches. It is to check is it seamless or not, right? Do you have any breaks 
in the geometry, right? Um, so usually EMAP is used for um, when you're doing uh, cars, planes, um, boats, uh, ships, and so on. Then you use EMAP to check whether or not you have some problems with the geometry and it's, uh, you know, not, um, not smooth, right? Uh, and, and that would be a very big problem if, if your airplane, you know, s surface is not smooth. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we will take a short break uh, actually right now. Um, so I will be saving these files here um, and, and sending them over to you. And those of you who are struggling with uh, filleting, uh, this whole shape, um, uh, filleting the edges, just use blend, uh, blend SRF, you know, the move them apart, use blend SRF, and uh, then it should work. Um, so I'll send you the files, um, and then we will continue. So uh, let's have a 15 minute break, uh, and then I'll call you, um, call you all back, right? So 15 minutes, Record. Okay, we're recording. So let's continue with this. Uh, so now you have the, 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 the file that I've sent, uh, as well as your own file, hopefully. Um, I have just, like, in, in the file that I've sent, I've just uh, separated the, uh, the facades into two. Uh, into two parts here, just to show you, you know, how this 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 guy is made. Uh, that you have let edge on the sides and blend surface was done it, it, in the middle section of the uh, of the sculpture that we have. We don't need that here. Okay, um, so I'll be showing you a few more things. Uh, first of which is going to be Let's say here, I want to make a hole, right? Which would follow along this, this kind of a surface of, of my building, right? Um, to make a hole, um, you can either just use a circle, you project it, uh, and then you use trim, but that's a little bit wonky. Um, the other way on how you can do this is well, first of all, let's extract just that surface and let's just work on just that particular surface here. So I will type in extract SRF, enter. And where it says copy in the command line, I will, uh, I will make sure that copy is set to be no. So copy no. And then I will just select my surface that I want to extract. So any kind of a uh, relatively, well, we won't be extracting the, the, the fillets, but any kind of surface other than the fillet will work. Just choose one of the top ones. So this one, for instance, I'll hit enter. And now this, uh, once I hit enter, this is a separated object, right, from, from my original uh, shape. Then I will type in isolate. And now it's the only thing that I have on my screen. Well, except the grasshopper output, but you can easily just uh, hide the preview of the grasshopper output so that it's not in the way. It is basically, we know that <clears throat> we will be working with just uh, this surface now. So I want to make a hole in it, right? Um, to do that, I will be using a tool that uh, we have shown you during the Rhino course um, in the second year, uh, which is going to be flow along surface, right? So for flow along surface to work, first of all, you need some sort of a shape that will be flown along surface. And in that, in this case, I will just be making a circle. 
the size of the circle doesn't matter anywhere in your Rhino file, right? Just a circle. And then around the circle, I will make a rectangle like so. Something like this. Okay. Um, then I will select my rectangle and type in planner SRF. Basically to just create a surface within that rectangle. And then I'll just delete the, the rectangular curve. I'll just keep <clears throat> the surface. So what I end up with is just this rectangular surface and the circle on top of it. Right. And now I can do, uh, this is enough for me to do the flow along surface command. So if, it, if I type in flow along surface, flow along SRF, enter, I will start reading what it asks me in the command line. So first of all, it asks me to select objects to flow along a surface. So I will select my circle. <clears throat> that is the object that I want to map from this rectangle to, to my uh, bendy surface uh, of, of, of my shape. So I just select my curve, my, my circle, and I hit enter. Then it asks me to select base surface near a corner. So I will just select my, uh, my rectangle near, uh, somewhere near the rectangular surface, somewhere near my uh, bottom left-hand side corner, like so. Then I don't need to press enter or anything. I just can immediately read what it asks me more in the command line. Then it asks me to select the target surface near a matching corner, right? So I will just select my bendy loft uh, near a matching corner, like so. Click. And you can see here, this, this circle was mapped to, uh, to fit on top of this shape. And it got stretched out really far. Right? So there are two, two reasons uh, why that happens. First reason is, um, and I purposely made it like so. Um, so let me just select that curve that was mapped and just delete it. So the first reason is the U and V uh, directions don't match between these two surfaces. So what I can do is I can select both of them, both of the surfaces, the loft and the rectangular surface, and I can type in there. No, not there, sorry. Uh, UV, uh, wait. Rebuild UV. Rebuild UV. Enter. And now I can see that that in this case, the green lines are going, in, in my case, uh, along the loft, the green lines are going uh, from right to left while in my rectangle, the green lines, which correspond to the U direction, are going from bottom to top, meaning it's not, you know, uh, it's not how it should, should work, right? So if I remember correctly, and let me, let me just double check. If I remember correctly, if I were to flip UV, uh, I need to Google that, sorry. I don't, I don't remember correctly. <laughs> uh, flip UV uh, Rhino. 
Uh, oh, okay. So it was the di direction command. So if I select my rectangle here and I type in DIR, short for direction, hit enter. You can see the for a curve, you would just get a single arrow, for, uh, which shows you the direction of the curve. But for the surface, you get three arrows, which shows you the U, V, and W directions. I can then click on Swap UV, like that. Hit Enter. And now, if I were to select both of these and type in Rebuild UV, I can see that, well, at least, <laughs> okay, so they're going in the opposite direction, but that's, that's okay. We can just uh, select this guy and flip, uh, type in flip, and then, oops, and then rebuild UV. What the? Hmm. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's let's try this again. Now, I am th at this point where we rebuild. Uh, if we type, we select both of them, and we type rebuild UV. The green arrows are in um, correct alignment, but they are in uh, going in opposite directions. Right, so we need to fix that. And to fix that, um, I will be flipping the direction of the green arrows uh, of the of this rectangle here. Right, so I'll just hit Escape to cancel out everything. I'll select the rectangle and I'll type in the direction. Right, Enter. And then all I need to do is just click on U Reverse. No, nope, uh, V reverse, not U reverse. <laughs> I'll click that, I'll hit enter, and now it should work. So now let's try using flow along surface again. Flow along surface. Select objects to flow along the surface. Uh, let me just check the chat. Okay, chat is empty, that's good. Select objects to flow along surface. I select my circle. I hit enter, base surface. I select my bottom right corner, uh, bottom left corner of my base surface, and then without pressing enter, I select the bottom left corner of my target surface. Hmm. Now this gets mapped, but it gets mapped still in a funky way. But this is a little bit better, which means that uh, what we can do now is start stretching this rectangle here, right? To, to, to fit it better. So I'll just delete uh, the, 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 the circle that was uh, created, the, the, the new one, I'll delete that. And now I can just scale up the rectangle like so. Um, make sure that maybe it does react. Just make sure that um, you can't. It, when when you try to select things here uh, after you use flow along surface, just make sure that uh, there's no like hidden uh, circle or anything like that there. Hmm. That's strange. Let's do it this way then. Uh, select your circle. I, I, if you can't see it, uh, select your circle here and type in extrude curve and just extrude it a little bit up and just choose solid to be turned off like that. So just make an empty 
uh, cylinder. Ah, okay, okay. So, um, let's try this again. Now I have uh, stretched the rectangle in one direction and I just want to see how it's going to react here. So I'll do flow along surface again. I will select my cylinder now. I'll hit enter. I'll select the base surface and I'll select the target surface. And my cylinder is first of all, you know, going in the opposite direction, which is not ideal. Second of all, it's still stretched out, meaning that the, 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 the way I stretched this underlying rectangle is, it was done in the wrong direction, right? So we can fix it very easily by stretching it back here something like this and stretching it out here something like this let me move it to the side like so don't rotate it uh, if you rotate it it won't work but uh, just use the scale to, to to scale it down in one direction scale it up in the other and uh, one more problem that we had was that this cylinder was uh, being mapped to the wrong side of our geometry. We want it to be mapped outwards. So I will just select my shape here and I'll type in flip, uh, not, not the shape, but uh, the, the rectangle and I'll type in flip. So now it's, you know, it's flipped to the other, uh, opposite side. What was up is down, what was down is up for this rectangle. We try it again. Flow along surface. I select my uh, cylinder, enter. I select my rectangle by the bottom left corner again. I select the bottom left corner of my uh, shape. Ah, okay, so flip didn't work, but at least the, the rectangle, uh, sorry, the cylinder now is in the correct position, and that's good enough for us. Yes, I scaled the, uh, I did scale the rectangle, uh, the, this guy, before I had it, uh, <clears throat> before I had it like so, something like that. And then I scaled it down here and scaled it up here so that it fits better here. Um, if it's a perfect circle, that means you nailed it. <laughs> if it's a bit stretched, that means you almost nailed it, that's fine. Uh, you will never get a perfect circle on a curvilinear shape with this method and that is fine we don't need it to be a perfect circle okay so we have this going on that's good that means that now any kind of a for instance any kind of a shape that we add i can just keep you know kind of copying these cylinders let me delete that one come on delete um so you can add multiple shapes or, or curves doesn't matter on top of your surface. And then you can use flow along surface. You select the objects, enter, bottom left corner, bottom left corner of the surface for flow along surface. And those objects will be mapped on your facade, on the facade surface. In this case, uh, I only care about one, so I'll be deleting others here. So you should have something, something like this. I will be using this object to trim. So I'll select this object, uh, sorry. I'll just type in trim, enter. I'll select this as my cutting object, hit enter. And I'll then click inside 
uh, on the surface inside of the cutting object, you cut out a hole in it, like that. And then I don't need the cylinder anymore, so I just delete it. So it's trim. Mm -hmm. Uh, objects are sticking out from the surface, but are they touching the surface though? If they are, that means trim will work. All we need those objects for is just uh, to be able to... Okay, so all, all we need those objects for is just to cut out uh, a, a hole in our shape. Uh, you need to, yeah, got it, got it. So um, first Kaiser, uh, Kaiser, you need to, um, wh when you're using the trim, it matters where you click it. If you click inside um, of, of, of the region, it's going to trim out the hole. If you click outside, it's going to trim out everything except the hole, right? So you need to, <clears throat> when you're using trim, you need, uh, it matters where you click. And for Frey, uh, just make the circle smaller, the, uh, the cylinder smaller, right? And then it, it, it will not reach the edge. what will not always match. Um, they will, but not in this case. So there, there are two types of surfaces. One is uh, something like this, right? just a regular surface. And if I um, type in what on it, it's going to say, oh, it's not even saying that. This is basically an untrimmed surface, meaning that this is, you know, what you see is what you get. But if I have something like, um, something like this, right? If I have a surface like this, this is a trimmed surface, meaning that it's actually, if I uh, select it and I type in rebuild, for instance, you can see that it's, there's an underlying surface behind it, right? So the way mapping will work uh, is it's for trimmed surfaces, it's going to use this whole, uh, whole grid. Um, and that's, that's what you're seeing, you know, th that kind of mismatch. Uh, in this case, if I select this and rebuild, you can see that the bottom part, since we used the fillet, the bottom part was trimmed off, right? So there, uh, it, it introduces a certain amount of mismatch. Mm. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's trim and uh, uh, it's trimmed surface versus non-trimmed surface, uh, problematic. And uh, Kaisa, did, did, did it work? Uh, did the trimming work? No? Okay, good. Uh, so we move on. So a long way to make a hole, but once you get used to it, uh, it's, it's the fastest way to make, a, uh, to make holes here especially if you need to make many, then what you do is you draw them out on a flat, um, you know, on a flat rectangle in the top view and you use flow along surface and it just kind of immediately just poofed, maps out all of the holes on your, on your shape, which is uh, quite a useful tool. Uh, in this case, it might be probably better, you know, if you're just making one hole, it would be probably better to just make a cylinder, kind of position it and, you know, by hand manually and use it to trim.
but uh, I just wanted to show you this tool. And then for this guy, to finish up working with this guy, actually let me, we won't be using these anymore, so let me delete that. For this guy, I want to create some sort of a struct, not structure here, but, but something cool here. Uh, so I will be creating a circle, right? And I'll just create a circle somewhere near and just make sure that the circle is relatively small or, or and, and you can squish it any way you want. As long as it's flat, that's fine. So I'll create a circle and I'll kind of position it in my shape, something like so. Uh, maybe something like so. Yeah, why not? So I have a circle here, right? Well, it's not, it's an ellipse now, right? Because I squished it. It's still flat though, but uh, it's rotated and it's placed inside of the hole. Um, when you're doing this, make sure that there is a gap between the edge of the, of the hole and uh, the ellipse that you're drawing now. So something like this. Mm -hmm. And then I will use loft, enter, and I'll select, uh, it asks me to select the curves to loft. So I will select my edge of the hole and I will select my ellipse and hit enter and then enter again. And it makes this kind of a loft for me. Right? So this is not ideal. It's a little bit wonky. So I'll show you a method that I really like using that will make a much nicer uh, shape than this. So I'll delete the loft. And what I'm going to do is I will just create a single straight line segment uh, between anywhere on my uh, outer edge and perpendicular perpendicular point from from that point on the on on the outer edge of, of the hole uh, perpendicular point to my ellipse like that right So the tool um, that I'm going to be using is going to be called Sweep2. Two. Sweep2. Two. Sweep between two rails. Sweep2. And it's going to ask me to select the first rail. So that's going to be my outer, uh, like the, 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 the edge of my hole here. It's going to ask me to select the second rail, which is going to be my uh, ellipse here. And it's going to ask me to select the cross section curves, which is going to be the, 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 this kind of single line segment that I have drawn here. I hit enter. And you can see that it makes a pretty decent, uh, a, a, a much nicer shape. The, th the thing about this, is if I want to then um, adjust it, I can click on add slash here, add slash, and I can draw out the ISO curves as I please, right? So as these line segments. So I can keep drawing out the ISO curves any way I want. And it's going to 
do its best to fit the surface through those ISO curves. So I end up with something like this. All right? Then I hit enter and hit enter again. And I have my sweep between two rails done. All right. So now I will uh, do something quite simple. Um, uh, let, let me just give you like half a minute to finish up with this. So loft, uh, loft doesn't let you uh, love doesn't let you change things. Um, it, it, it just takes the two curves. Uh, I chose the outer one, the, the, the opening of the hole as the first rail. Um, so loft just takes two curves. It finds their starting points and it just creates a surface through them. Sweep between two rails takes two curves and it also takes a, a section profile um, and it lets you add more information as it's creating it, right? So, so you can choose um, how that surface is being created, which is, I, I, I think it's very, very nice to have. So I end up with having something like this. Then, uh, let, let's move on, actually. Um, I will just select my curve, uh, the, uh, the, the, the ellipse curve that I have here, and I'll use offset, yeah, just simple offset, and I'll offset it, offset it inwards by something like 0 0.2. Uh, I don't know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So I just offset the curve inwards like that. So these two, the, the original ellipse and the one that was offset, they are in the same plane, which means I can select both of them and I can type in planner SRF, planner surface. And it will just create a ring for me, right? And then I can select the ellipse, the, the inner ellipse, the smallest one, the offsetted one. And I can use extrude. Uh, I can select it and I can type in extrude curve and kind of extrude it inwards uh, by, I, I won't even type anything in, I'll do it from by eye. So I, I will just extrude it inwards like that. So I end up with something like this. And then I can just use planner surface again. Select the, yeah, just look at the screen. <laughs> Select this edge here. Don't know how to call it. The the end of the extrusion edge. Uh, I can just select it, use planner surface, or first use planner surface and then select it, hit enter, and it creates a surface for me here. So we end up with something like this. Once you're done with this, type in cell CRV, short for select curves, cell CRV, hit enter, and then just hit delete. So you're getting rid of all of the curves that you've been using to, to create this shape. All right. And the last thing is selecting everything, typing in join, so everything joins into a single poly surface. And let's see if fillet edge 
will work around the where the hole was uh, around the whole edge right so i'll type in fillet edge wait chat uh which one did you choose as first drill did you offset the yes i offsetted the circle in the yeah i i offsetted the circle uh, or or the ellipse which was uh the, the, the smallest ellipse I've offset it inwards, I've extruded it, and uh, I've used planar surface to kind of cap things together. And once that, uh, that was done, I just deleted all of the curves um, and, and joined everything into one poly surface. And now I'm just checking if fillet edge with, next radi uh, with radius set to be 0 0.5 or something like that. Will it work on this edge? And that is a strong no. <laughs> Just breaks. Okay, that's fine. A way to fix... Uh... No, uh, we don't have the time. So I will not be showing you a way, a way to fix it. But it's basically, um, if you want to fix it, then you can use blend surface. Uh, instead of fillet and then it's going to, to fix it just like we did it with um, uh, one of the edges of the whole shape. But now we, uh, this would take too long. Okay. Yeah, uh, if, if you do like extremely small radius, like fillet edge 0 0.05, it should work. Now, in my case, it still breaks even with 0 0.05. But uh, in some cases, it might work. In some cases, it might not. It's always, you know, uh, geometry is something that's quite restrictive. Uh, so, so it's always problematic, but that's fine. Uh, aesthetically speaking, having a sharp edge here is absolutely okay, I think. So, so I won't bother uh, fixing that. Um, Kaiser can't select her edges. Uh, your edge. Which edge? For, for which tool? The one to fillet. Yeah, you need to write fillet edge first, and then you'll be able to select it. Uh, you need to join everything up first into a single open poly surface uh, by just using join, and then you will be able to write fillet edge and select your uh, that that particular edge. Um, if you're not, if you haven't joined, uh, if you haven't joined the, yeah, there we go. So if you haven't joined the geometry uh, together, it treats um, treats those edges as naked edges, the ones that go around the outer boundary of of your shape. And for instance, if I type in flat edge and I try to select. This, this edge right here, do you hear me clicking? Wait, yeah. um, that won't work. Uh, so, so you need to, it, fillet edge only works for interior edges, which means we need to kind of join everything up. Okay, uh, we're done with the weird thing here. Let's show, type in show, join everything up back into one shape. Select, uh, type in EMAP, select your shape, and just see how it looks like. Yeah, it seems kind of okay. So this kind of, uh, opening uh, is used for 
um, is widely used for modern buildings. Like it's 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 a little bit you know overused at this point, but uh, or maybe not. Maybe it's just the the the, the buildings that I'm looking into. Uh, oh, we need to do the call again. So wait, stop sharing. I'll call you back. <laughs> we'll continue then. Uh, where's my reminder to 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 record? Why is no one telling me to record? Um, so I have uh, I have my shape, and I have in in the front view I have just uh, drawn two lines that kind of cut the shape, and I can uh, type in trim, trim. Select these two lines, hit enter, and then just trim off the ends of my building. Not building, sculpture, like so. Enter. So now it's, it looks like this. Now I will use, uh, what is it called, uh, fill, no, not fill, yes, cap. I will use cap to cap it off and, and, and you know, just, just make it into, into a single solid shape. Um, actually, let's undo, let's not do cap, so control Z, undo. Let's let's treat it in a similar way of how we treated the opening of the window here, right? I will select this shape that I have before I I capped it, right? So so now it's still open on on both ends. I will select it, and I will type in dupe border. Dupe border, short for duplicate border. Enter. And it's going to give me an edge here and an edge here. It's basically duplicate border always gives you the curves uh, around the openings of your shape, right? So since I have those curves here, I will just select my overall uh, shape and I will hide it. So now it's just these two curves that I have. All right. Now I will select this curve. Uh, well, not select, but I will type in offset. And let me see if I choose distance to be like one. Let's see how it offsets. Well, it's not that bad. Uh, it's actually pretty bad. Wait, let's try again. Offset. Uh, that's even worse. Okay, fine. Uh, let, let's do an offset. So offset with distance. Uh, let, let, let's go for distance 1.5. Like that. And then let's use uh, rebuild. On the offset curve. Rebuild. And point count. Uh, wait, chat. Uh, it's because you used cap, probably. Uh, I, I used cap really quickly, and then I used Control Z to undo it. So uh, as long as you have openings there, duplicate border should create uh, curves around the openings. Let me know if that, that works out. Okay. So then uh, I take the curves and I offset them inwards by uh, 1.5. And then I rebuild the offsetted ones. So you can see here, um, as I'm rebuilding it, it gives me this kind of a blob shape. 
That's because my point count is set to be five. And originally the curve had 36 control points. So I will say, um, let's, let's go for 10 maybe. Yeah, 10 is good enough. So I'll use 10 control points, hit OK, and I have <laughs> an ugly shape here, whatever. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll repeat the same thing for, for this guy here. Goddamn, that looks so bad. Uh, I will offset it first, rebuild with 10 points. Okay, so I have these two shapes here. All right. So now we can loft, uh, not loft, sorry. We, we, we can uh, use planner surface, planner SRF on one side like that, and planner SRF on the other side like that. So we get something like this. And then I will use for the inner <coughs> edges, for, for the inner blobs, uh, I will use extrude. And I will just give it like 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.3 something like that, 0 0.3 for the extrusion. I'll repeat the same thing. So uh, we're extruding them inwards into the, 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 the building, right? I will extrude this one as well, 0 0.3, something like that. So we have this edge. And now I can uh, use show to get my building back, select it all, type in join, and then I use cap. So it fills in these parts. Hmm? <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat the whole thing. Uh, if it says it's uh, unable to extrude, that means your we go where where are we? So two curves. If it says that it's unable to extrude, that means your curve is self-intersecting, and that's not good. Um, which would mean that uh, you would need to 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 rebuild it with less amount of points and then it, it should work. So again, I'll try it offset 1.5, offset 1.5, select, select, rebuild, 10 points, planner surface, planner surface for that guy. <clears throat> Select the curve, extrude 0 0.3. Select the curve here, extrude 0 0.3. Show. Select the whole shape, join. Let's see. Um, wait, the curve that we changed points on is still there. Um, are you talking about um, so you get something like this? Um, when you use rebuild, <clears throat> rebuild for a curve, uh, you can 
tick mark the delete input option option and then once you hit OK, it's going to delete the original and it's just going to keep the newly rebuilt one. So that's that's probably why you still see the, the, the original curve after you use the rebuild. Um, hmm. So yeah, that one input was not extruded because it would have made an invalid surface. Let me try, try to replicate that. If I have a curve that's doing something like this, self-intersecting, right? And I try to extrude it. Well, it's a little bit different, but curves selected to extrude include self-intersecting curves. This may produce undesirable results. Do you want to extrude these curves? If I hit yes, it's still going to extrude, but it's not going to be a nice, uh, nice shape. Like it's not going to be a clean shape. Um, okay. So back here, we have our thing, and then I will just select it and type in cap. And it fills, fills in the shape, like so. All right. So now, let's add some funky stuff to it. So I want to add, uh, does everyone, by the way, have a closed, like a closed shape? Mm -hmm. We, that's good. Um, I want to create uh, a, a pattern on top of my shape. No, <laughs> that, that there's. Uh, wh wh which part is, is is problematic? Um, okay, there is one more thing that you need to do. Um, let's say I have a whatever, a curve like this and I'm rebuilding it, rebuild, right? And I'm choosing a different point count. Make sure that you have delete input on and you press okay. Right, so, so, so make sure that you press OK when you're rebuilding it. Okay. okay. So once you're done that, it's just a planner surface, extrude curve, and joining everything, and using cap to, to fill it in, to, to, to cap it up. So now, um, Yes, uh, cap, uh, no, uh, cap automatically detects all of the openings of a shape, all of the holes in the shape. And as long as the holes are flat, it is going to fill them in. You don't need to explode anything. I didn't use explode whatsoever. Uh, if you want to fill something that is not flat, uh, then you need to work with it much more. Um, for instance, how, how can I show this? Mm, let's say, okay, let me show it like this. We have a box. Mm 
that extract surface let me show it uh, here solid points on right okay so this is considered to be an opening as well right uh, in between the cylinder top and the top of the box I have an opening and if I do cap it's going to cap uh, the, the top of the box and if I kind of uh, clipping plane and if I kind of look into it it's also um, capping the, 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 the top of the cylinder right so so I end up with a shape like this but what if I want the cap to be in between the cylinder and the box? Then I would need to manually do it, right? So let me go back to what I had, like that. Then I would need to manually do it. And in this case, I can do it by duplicate border and just using loft, you know, to loft between these two, join. But in other cases, it might be a bit more tedious and a bit harder to do. Um, so it's, it's very, uh, every thing that, like every opening that is not flat, you will need to figure out um, a, a method on how you're going to fill, fill it in. And it's usually you just model out that surface that you need. Um, when I try to cap it, close the hole on the outer ring, not the inner. So I just duplicate the border and then selected the inner ring and made the planner. Yeah, uh, that's fine as well. That works as well. So it's actually exactly what cap does, only that you did it manually. Yeah. Um, okay, let's continue. So I want to create a pattern, for instance, on, let's start with, let's see this surface right here, right? Uh, the, 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 the facade surface here. I want to create some sort of a pattern on it um, to, to just introduce a little bit of variety. To do that, I will first of all extract it so that it's the only surface that I see. So I'll use extract surface, extract SRF, select my facade surface, hit enter and type in isolate so that it's the only surface that I see like that. Then I will bring it into Rhino, uh, into Grasshopper by specifying that it is a surface. So I'll just uh, create a component or node that's called SRF, like empty surface container, SRF surface. The one that has the black, black hexagon. I'll create that and reference in set one surface, reference in the surface here. Okay. Once I have done that, I will select the surface and type in hide to just uh, hide it. Uh, in, 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 in Rhino, so that it's only the grasshopper version that I see. Okay. Now, um, let me check one thing real fast. I don't remember uh, if it's gonna work or not. Uh, divide surface. Yeah, not great. Hmm. Okay. Let me check one more thing real fast.
yeah, that's also not great. Okay, so the problem that I have now is that this surface right here is a trimmed surface, right? Uh, so any kind of division that I do on top of the surface is going to have, um, what you might call it, Second, any kind of division that I do on top of the surface is going to 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 uh, to extend beyond it, right? So that's that's the same problem as we had before, right? If if we have a some sort of a surface and we draw out whatever a circle there, and we use the circle circle to trim the surface like that, and then we use uh, rebuild for instance on that surface you can see that it remembers the original surface right so it it, it treats it as a, some rectilinear surface rectangular surface that was trimmed with a circle and that's that's not good for us especially in this case so uh what i'm going to do in this case uh and and, and it might vary but in this case, I know for a fact that we have four edges here, right? Uh, so so my, the boundary edges of my surfaces uh, are four. Uh, so what I can do is I can rebuild my surface with those four edges. So first thing is I want to extract the edges of my surface. So I'll just type in brep edges. I'll use that component, brep edges, and connect my surface to it. So now uh, it gives me all of the <clears throat> it gives me all of the curves. Right? It gives me all of the exterior curves, which are four. It gives me all of the interior curves, which are none, and it gives me all of the non-manifold uh, edges, which are also none. I only have four. Uh, curves going around the perimeter. So, and those are my uh, naked edges. So I can use those to create a surface uh, from four edges. And if we go to the surface tab and freeform sub tab, you can see here all, all of the different ways on how we can create a surface. And one of them is called, uh, Wait, oh, there we go. One of them is called edge surface. Create a surface from two, three, or four edge curves, edge surface. So I'll just choose that. <clears throat> and you can see here that edge surface asks me for four inputs and each input corresponds to one uh, curve, right? That is going to be used to create a, a, a surface. And here I have a list of four curves. The problem is that here they need to be separated and here they come out as a single list. So I need to separate that list. To do that, we will be using list item, list item, like that, which gives us uh, some item from the list. And uh, by default, it always gives us the first item of the list. I'll be connecting the uh, naked edges to my list item input, like so. And you can see if I highlight it, then it gives me the bottom curve here, right? The bottom curve gets highlighted. So that means this is my first curve of the list. And then to get more, I can zoom in to this, uh, it's important to zoom in. So I can zoom into this node. Uh, wait. And I can press the plus button. One, once, twice, three times. So doesn't do what, yeah? Um, so when I press the plus button three times, it gives me the first curve of the list, the second curve of the list, third, 
n4. So it keeps you know giving me the next one, the next one, and the next one. Um, are you highlighting the node? Because if you're not highlighting the node, did you connect the list item to the edges input output? Highlights all. Well, right now, if, if, if you have it like that, if you have already, okay, good. So, so now, since we have it, we have all four of our curves outputting, it should, you know, highlight all four of them. And now I will just create the, uh, not create, uh, connect the first curve to the A, second curve to B, C and D, just like that. And I'll actually hide everything except the edge surface node, just so that it's not in the way. So visually, it doesn't seem like anything changed, but now the, the, the surface that was created is not a trimmed surface anymore, but rather a clean one. So we just got a surface, we extracted all of its edges, and we rebuilt a new one with the extracted edges. All right. So now, <clears throat> let's add a little bit of, of bizarres to it. Um, there, there's a million ways on how we can um, on, on what kind of patterns we, we can make. I mean, if, if, if you just Google, uh, where is it? Uh, if you just Google uh, parametric pattern like this, you know, there's a ton of different patterns. And all of these, of course, are made in Grasshopper. Well, most of these are are made in Grasshopper and you can go deeper and deeper and deeper, but honestly, uh, whatever. Uh, we will just be using something simple for, for this tutorial, um, just uh, because the type of pattern doesn't matter. You know, is it a hexagon grid? Is it a triangular grid? Is it a rectangular grid? It doesn't matter. All that matters is uh, the form and the behavior of the form where do you have the pattern and how active is it with the form later on you can substitute that the pattern that we're going to be doing now with anything you know that that you can come up with so edge surface uh let's create uh just a rectangular uh yeah let's just create a rectangular pattern so what i want to do with the surface right now is I want to uh, trim it, not trim it, sorry. I want to divide it up into smaller surfaces. So I want to have a bunch of small surfaces here, basically create panels. A tool that does that is called ISO trim. ISO trim. Yeah, and you have uh, two inputs for the ISO trim. Uh, you have two inputs for the ISO trim uh, node. The first one is the base surface, and that's good. We do have the base surface, and the second one is the domain. And a domain is something that's. Uh, uh, for, for us architects, it's a little bit more difficult to understand and to explain, but it's basically a mathematical um, thing where um, you basically take uh, 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 any, any range. Let's, let's say, just create a new page like that. 
So you have a surface, right? And that surface can be uh, regarded as a domain that contains uh, numbers, right? So the start of the surface is zero comma zero. The end of the surface is zero comma one, uh, sorry, is uh, one comma one. And here you have zero comma one. And here you have one comma zero, right? Which means that the middle of it is 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5, right? So uh, a, a regular domain is a range between two values, right? So let's say 0 to 0 0.5. Is, is, this is called the domain, right? Um, in this case, since we're dealing with two dimensions rather than one dimension, we are dealing with always two numbers, right? So it's going to be, in, in our case, it's going to be uh, 0 to 0 0.5, and then another one 0 to 0 0.5, right? If we repeat it two times, that means it will take this point here, and it will take this point here, and it will create an area in between these points, right? So we end up with this smaller rectangle here. And then if we give it another domain, which is going to be, uh, say 0 0.5 to one, and then, uh, wait, 0 0.5 to one, and then zero, to one um, and then zero to 0 0.5 and then zero to 0 0.5 it's going to say okay 0 0.5 to one I, I'm, I'm getting this part zero to 0 0.5 I'm getting this part and it's going to create another rectangle so we can keep adding these these kind of domains over and over and creating new uh, rectangles on top of an existing one right and it, it always works from zero until one. Um, so that's, that's a quick, uh, quick and poor explanation of it. Um, thankfully, we don't need to do it manually. All we need to do is just, uh, see, where is it? Wait, let me, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, we need to go to the maths tab, go to domain, and right at the bottom of the domain subtab, you will find divide domain squared. Not divide domain, but rather divide domain squared, like with a small squared thing. This guy, which will ask you, okay, uh, give me the base domain. So your base domain is weird, but it's the surface. So you just connect your surface to the I input, like so. And it will ask you, how many divisions do you want in U and V values? So here, I, I would get something like this. If I said that I want two divisions in U value, right in here, and if I, uh, so, so two divisions, and I have two divisions in, 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 in V value, right? I would get something like this. But in our case, we need something much more, right? So by default, it's set to be 10 by 10, and that's fine, uh, but I will be creating two sliders for, for it. Before I create two sliders, I will connect the surface divide to my subsurface D input like so, to just see uh, how it looks like and how it divides it up. Okay, so that is 10 by 10. We need, we need it to be controlled a little bit better. So I will be creating a slider 
in between one and uh, so one dot dot and let's say 30. One dot dot 30. And I'll be just connecting that slider to the U value for now, just the U value. And here you can see as I'm increasing or decreasing the slider, the amount of divisions changes, right? So since this is my vertical di direction, I will just be using like five. Uh, yeah, the, the, the value of something like five. And for my V direction, so I'll just copy and paste the slider. I'll connect it to the V direction. Maybe I should look at it from the front view, in the front view. So for my V direction, I'll be increasing the number right until 30. So that I get something like this. Okay. So that's, um, it's as if I have divided up my surface into small panels. Um, oh, we need to stop, record, minimize. Don't know where to place this. I'll just place it there. Okay, we're back. Um, so now I have a bunch of panels here, right? I want to make something interesting that happens in those panels. And I can think of them right now, since they're all in the same list, I can think of those panels as um, something that's, I don't know, um, as, as, as individual pieces, right? So as long as I solve one of them, I, uh, all others will follow and I'll be able to solve all of them. Right, so here I have a panel or, 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 or a number of panels and all of those are separate surfaces, right? If I grab a, 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 a panel here, you can see all of these are a bunch of surfaces. That's good. So I can uh, get the, 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 the edges of those surfaces by just using edge uh, sorry, B rep edge, B rep edges, like that. And all of those panels will give me, each one of those panels will give me uh, four edges. So I will just simply join them by using join curves command. I'll join those edges into closed polylines, right? So now if I hide everything except the curve join component, I end up with uh, these uh, closed polylines, uh, closed rectilinear polylines here. All right. Which means I can do some funky stuff with them. For instance, I can um, grab their co co corner points of each polyline, like four corner points, by just using this continuity node. This continuity basically measures where the curve changes direction really fast. It just gives you corners, right? So it's continuity. I just connect my curves to my uh, discontinuity input, curve input like that, and it gives me four points for each polyline, right? Then what I can do is I can say, use those four corner points to draw me a NURBS curve, which is going to be an ellipsoid shape. So I can double click and type in NURBS curve and use those points as my vertices, like that. Let me wait for you guys to catch up. Okay. 
okay? Chat. Flipped, uh, yeah, and it doesn't. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, if it's upside down, it's fine. Um, so we get U shapes or upside down U shapes. And that's uh, because there is one uh, thing that we need to change about the NURBS uh, curve node. And it's here and uh, the, the last input of it is a periodic curve. And it's set to be false by default, meaning that it doesn't close it, right? As, as it's building up the curve. Yeah, C shape is also okay. Uh, as long as uh, periodic curve is set to be true, it won't matter. So I will just use a toggle, Boolean toggle, connect it to my P input, and double click on it. So now it uses the corner points of each of our pole lines as an input for the NURBS curve to be made. Neat. Time to play around with the NURBS curve, uh, with these NURBS curves. OK. First thing. Like that. So the only two geometries that I have, uh, or two nodes that I am currently looking at, or I don't have hidden, is the curve join node, join curves node, and the NURBS curves node. Because I want to see the outside of the panel, and I want to see the NURBS curves inside of it. Um, just to be sure that everything works perfectly, I will be scaling those NURBS curves a little bit to, towards their center points, just so that things are not too thin in certain places, right? So I will be using scale, uh, a node that's called scale, like this. I'll connect my NURBS curves output, C output, to my scale geometry input, like so. And then it's going to ask me uh, to give it a center point of scaling, right? So getting a center point of a ellipsoid is, well, it's not a perfect ellipsoid and that will be a little bit rough, but getting a center point of the, the, the rectangular panels it's going to be easy, right? So what I'm going to do is basically for rectangular panels, so where I have the curve join tool, I will connect that curve join tool to, um, to the cent uh, polygon center. Polygon center tool. I will connect it like so. Oh, come on. Cannot convert input curve to pole line. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, okay, so even though these, uh, these guys look like rectangles, they're actually curving. And since they are curving, it's freaking out and doesn't like it. There is one more thing, uh, one more way of how to solve it. Uh, for that, I will need to show you uh, I will need to draw it out for you. So a way to solve it is if you have um, one, two, three, four, doesn't matter. If you have four points, right? And you need uh, a point which would be somewhere in the middle, not somewhere, exactly in the middle between those four points and let's say those, those four points are corner points of our rectangle, like that. If you want a, a point in the middle, remember that uh, each of these points have coordinates, right? So x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z, 
x, y, z. In any amount of points, to get the center one, which is here, right, the center point, you, you can do it by adding up all x coordinates of the points. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 and dividing them by the amount of how many uh, how many points you have divided by 4 equals equals x uh, middle right and doing the same thing for y and same thing for z right so from uh, like third grade not third like fifth grade of of school you know that uh, if you add four values right up and you divide the sum of them by the amount of how many values you've added that's just an average right so i can write this equation as average x average y average z equals midpoint uh, coordinates Does it work with 2D and 3D and uh, second and third degree curves as well, averaging the, the point values? Are you talking about um, the corners of uh, second and third degree curves or what? Yes, kinda, y y yes. Uh, if if it doesn't care. It doesn't care where these four points are. These four points, or, or even if it's four points, it can be, you know, uh, infinite amount of points. Well, it can't be infinite amount of points, but it can be a, a, a crap ton of points. And the average of all of them, uh, the average coordinates of all of those points will also be, it will always be the coordinates of a point in the middle. Exactly. If if a rectangle is, um, you know, a, 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 a saddle shaped, I, I won't. No, I, I won't even try. Uh, so so if a rectangle is is, is curved, uh, then the center point of it will not be on top of the surface. Only the the center point of. Uh, a shape needs to be uh, perfectly flat for the center point to be right on top of it. But that's fine. I'll fix that. So here, yeah, that, that, that is actually okay. So here we have um, our, our rectangles, right? And the discontinuities gives us the four corner points. If we get average, not average T set, average, if we just calculate an average of those four corner points per each rectangle, it's going to give us, the output of it is going to be the center point. And then we can use that center point as the center point of scaling, like so. I'll just wait uh, to see if it doesn't work for anyone. If yours is red, um, wait, let me make it red uh, for, for, for myself as well. There we go. If your 
Wait, is your scale red or is your average red? Average, okay. Uh, are you connecting uh, this continuity? Yeah, yeah. Don't connect the curves, connect the discontinuity point output. Also, if it's if your node is red, um, any node, it will give you an error message, like uh, to read, you know, what went wrong. And the error message is this kind of a small balloon uh, icon right on the top uh, left corner of uh, top right corner of the node. So if I click on it, it says, in my case, it says data conversion failed from text to number. And that is because instead of a factor number, I plugged in a letter A. So I'm just saying scale my ellipsoids around the center point with by the value of A. And it's freaking out because of that. So I'll disconnect it like that. Okay, let's, let's move on. So now we're scaling the ellipsoids towards the, the, the center points, but we still have, uh, you know, now we can control by how much. So that's the scaling factor. By default, it's said to be 0 0.5, and I think this is a little bit uh, overkill, a little bit too much. So I'll just create a slider that is going to be 0 0.7. Zero point seven five, right? Something like that. And then, as I move the slider, I can control how much these these ellipsoids contract, right? So I think zero point eight will do the trick. Okay, so it's getting a little bit convoluted with all of the geometry being shown at the same time. So I will hide everything except the scale and the curve join, right? So I see the, the scaled version of the curves and I see the outer rectangles, right, of each panel. All right. Now let's do some, uh, so, so r right now, you know, you could just say uh, loft between these two and, and get on with it, but I think that's, that's a little bit boring. So let's add a little bit more bizarre. First of all, I want these circles, the closer they are to a uh, outer edge of, of the surface, the closer they are to the perimeter, the smaller they get. And if they are closer than some value, I don't know, some value. If they're closer than some value, then they will be deleted altogether, right? So for that, I need to uh, measure the distance between uh, between these circles and the outer edge. It's, it's hard to do it by measuring the distance, but I can measure it. Uh, it. It's hard to measure the distance between two curves, but it is easy to measure the distance between these center points and the perimeter curve, right? So I'll do exactly that. So, um, I do have the center points, and let's create an empty point container. Point, like that. Connect the center points here. Just drag it a little bit to the top. And let's rename the point container. So I'll right click on it. And I'll rename it to center points of each panel, whatever, of, you know, center points of each panel. And then going back in my, into my definition, here, where it says, no, sorry, not here. 
here, right, right at the start, where I have surface and edges, all of these naked edges I can use as attractor curves. And basically, remember the first tutorial that we had, the closer things get to an attractor curve, the smaller they become, or wait, the higher they, they, they become. But in this case, they're gonna become smaller. Uh, so I can use that. So, da -da. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so I can use that, but here, um, instead of using four curves, I can just use one by just typing in join curves like this. So I'm just joining the whole perimeter into a single uh, polyline like that with, with, with join curves. And I will create an empty curve container, connect the output of my join curves into it, and I'll rename my curve container to be uh, joined up perimeter of the wall. I don't know, long one, but at least you get the, 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 the idea of what's going on. And I'll take my, um, that, that curve container that I have just renamed and I'll move it somewhere close to my center points of each panel container so that I can work with them both uh, more, 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 more closely together. This is, uh, the, the, the reason why I'm doing it is to not make a spaghetti uh, out of my definition and to kind of have it as clean as possible. Trust me, when you make large definitions, uh, it really matters. You know, uh, if, if, it's, if everything is really well organized, everything is grouped uh, and, and so on, or if everything is all over, all over the place, it really saves you time if you organize it. So now I have a single curve here in joined up perimeter of the wall. This is a single curve. And here I have a bunch of um, center points, right, of, of each panel. I will be scaling, instead of using a, a locked factor, which is 0 0.8, right, or, or whatever, instead of using a single slider for scaling, I will be using how close these points are to my perimeter, outer perimeter. I'll be using that to influence the, 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 the scale. So, join the perimeter of the wall, center points of each panel. Um, first of all, I need to use pull point. Full point, right? Hmm. There is one more thing that I want to do before we continue. Here, we have uh, average, right? Uh, from which center point? Well, you, you can see that everything is dashed here, meaning that every single panel is its in, it has its own branch, uh, data branch. We don't need that. We can work with this just as a single list. It will really help us. So what I'm going to do is for the output of the average, not the input, the output of the average, I will right click it. Well, well wait, 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 uh, scale. Uh, where, it, where it's a scale, disconnect the average for, for, for now. So holding down the control key, disconnect the average from the scale or else you can crash your computer. Um, and then once you have disconnected the average, then you, use, you right click on it, on the output of it and choose flatten. 
So you get rid of the data structure. And you do the same thing for the NURBS uh, curve output as well. Choose the C, right click on it, flatten. Um, simplif what's the difference between flatten and simplify? So flatten uh, gets rid of, <sighs> hmm. flatten gets rid of the data tree and it forces everything to be a single list. If you have multiple lists, right, a list of lists, then it uh, gets rid of that information and puts items from all of those lists into one big long list, right? So that's flatten. What simplified does, it just works with the addresses uh, of the lists, right? So uh, I can explain it like so. Um, if I grab a param viewer and connect it, data with 150 branches, for instance, here, right? And the data tree looks like this. Um, but the more important thing is this is the address of each list. And you can see that the address is, um, it, it has a bunch of zeros, right? And those zeros are not necessary. They are not important. This is just, well, I can't call it junk. Um, on very, very rare occasions, you need those additional zeros in the address. But usually they, uh, they are useless. So, and, and most of the time they even get in the way. So to get rid of all of those zeros in the address, you right click and you choose simplify, and it just does that. Right? So it gets, res it gets rid of all of the unnecessary zeros. If I then check the data tree, it looks like this. Rather than before simplify, it looked like this. So it had a lot of unnecessary steps. Right? So simplify does that. It just fixes the addressing of the data tree. Uh, while flatten removes the data tree uh, altogether. Um, so back here, we have flattened the output of the average and we have flattened the output of the NURBS. Let's connect the average back to the center point of scaling. So to the center of scaling. It should be absolutely the same. Only now the wires are not dashed anymore. And we can uh, continue with the pull, uh, pull point uh, command. So it asks us for two things. First one is point to search from, and the second one is geometry that pulls. So, uh, so point to search from is the center points of each panel, right? We're searching from those points. And geometry that pulls is our joined up perimeter of the wall. So it's that. And basically it gives us a bunch of distances, right? And we can use those distances. For instance, if I were to, uh, to just take those distances and connect them to as my factor, it kind of works, but not really, right? So we still need to, to fix a few things about it. Uh, gives an error. Which, which tool, which node gives you an error and what uh, pool? And what does the error say? Data conversion failed from what to what? From point to curve. Um, are you using pull curve instead of, yep, <laughs> don't, uh, continuing, it's pull point, not pull curve, because you're measuring the stuff from the point rather than the curve. Okay, 
Um, so we have distances, right? Now it's the front part with the remap numbers, the graph mapper and the remap numbers again. Um, actually, let's not use a graph mapper now. Uh, yes, Andre, yes, you, you will be able to rest soon um, in 15 minutes or so. Um, 10 minutes maybe. Um, I just want to finish up here um, with, with this part of the definition. So let's use something a little bit easier. Um, before we used, uh, for, for tutorial number one that we've done, we've used uh, um, God damn it, how is it called? Uh, remapped numbers, graph mapper, and then remapped numbers again. In this case, we're just going to use remapped numbers once uh, without the gra graph mapper. So we'll be using, oh, there we go. In 10 minutes, we'll have a break. Um, remap numbers. Nope, that's not it. Remap numbers. There we go. Uh, and we will just be using values to remap which are uh, our distances, right? So we connect the distances from pull uh, point to our values that we're going to remap. The source domain is going to be um, zero to one, right? So, so it's going to be, uh, it needs to be our smallest and our, uh, longest distance, right? So from my, our smallest distance to our longest distance. And the tool that will give us that is called uh, bounds. <coughs> bounds. So we just connect distances to our bounds input and we connect our bounds output to our uh, source domain input. like that. And then our target domain is zero to one, but I can uh, kind of, oh, let's do, it, let's do it this way. Right slash slash, hit enter, so you get the panel, or just grab a panel from the params tab, the orange one. So you get the panel, double click on it, and write, uh, 0 point, uh, 0 0.1, 2, not the number 2, but the, the word 2, um, 0 0.8, something like that. And then connect that panel to the target. How many of you have read nodes now? No one? Okay, good. Usually, um, the students like to, when, when they're writing stuff in the panel, you know, and, and they write like 0 0.1 to 0 0.8, they immediately press enter, you know, and, and then nothing happens. And then they click out and then they connect the, the, the panel. Oh, never mind. This one doesn't care. Hmm. I, I, I thought that this one will turn red. Okay, that's, that's awkward. Um, basically, in the panel, when you press enter, it jumps to a new line uh, of text, right? And some nodes, most of the nodes in uh, Grasshopper will complain about it, right? So don't press enter in the panel unless you know what you're doing and you want to jump to another line of text. In this case, uh, once you've finished writing, just click somewhere outside of the panel and you're good to go. Okay, so we have our remapped values and I will be using them instead of my 
scale, uh, a scaling factor, like so. Well, let me hide the pull point command here and there we go. Now this is cleaner. So now you can see the closer these uh, elements get to, to the outer perimeter, the smaller they become, right? And the nice thing about it is that I can increase the divisions to, let's say, 7 uh, by 35, or even more, 7 by, by 40. And it's still going to work perfectly, right? So that's the strength of parametrics is that you can, uh, once you have the logic of how it works, um, you can play around with resolution as much as you want. Okay, so now the thing is that, um, the panels themselves, they are becoming uh, smaller and uh, as, as, as they're reaching the outer perimeter, but also I want to be able to control how, how they rotate, right? So I will, I will want to have one more um, attractor behavior. And for that, I will be using a point, uh, or, or let's, let's do two or three points. So I'll just be placing one, two, and three points here in Rhino. And I'll be just moving them somewhere closer to, to the surface. Like that. They don't need to be perfectly on the surface, but somewhere nearby. So I have three points here. I will reference those three points into Grasshopper. Point container, right click, set multiple points. Now I have them in Grasshopper, right? And I will do uh, another pull point node, pull point here, just like that. But in this, uh, in this case, uh, the first input point to search from is still going to be our center points of each panel, right? So it's still going to be that, like this. But now geometry that pulls is going to be one of these three points, right? So, so it's going to be these three points uh, that we have just referenced, like that. So we get new distances. And since I'm lazy, I will, uh, or, or no, let's, let's not be lazy. I will create a new remap numbers, remap numbers node, connect the distances to the V input. As my source domain, I will again use the bounds node. I'm, I'm basically repeating the, the, the same thing. And then as my target domain, I'll be saying, uh, I'll be creating a panel and writing minus, uh, minus 45 uh, to 45. This is going to be an angle rather than scaling factor. So it remaps the distances to the points. Um, it remaps the distances to the points uh, into uh, the, 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 the rotation values. 
So for the scaled, uh, now let's have a break, right? So let's have a break and I will uh, send over uh, this definition to you guys for those of you who have missed it. Okay, um, I'll, I'll call you in 15 minutes or so. It records. Okay, we continue. <clears throat> so we have here. Uh, where we did? With, where did we end up? Oh yeah. Uh, so so we have uh, created three points, calculated the distance between the center of each of our panel to those three points, and remap those values to uh, minus forty five and to, uh, to be in between minus 45 and 45. Okay, so next step, um, I will be using those values that we just got uh, to rotate, uh, to, to rotate each of these uh, circles around the Z axis, right? So to do that, um, I will, Type in rotate uh, 3D, rotate 3D. Yeah, enter. And I'll just follow uh, the inputs that it asks me. The first one is geometry that we're going to rotate, right? So that's going to be our scaled, uh, scaled uh, circles. That's the geometry that we're rotating, easy. Second is going to be rotation angle in radians. Uh, in radians, in radians, that's not, mm. we are not nerds, we are not using radians, we are using degrees like normal human beings. So we will be right clicking on the angle input and we will be choosing degrees instead of radians. All right. That's that. It's a little bit messed up now, but uh, it, uh, it, it's fine. It's because it's using the, the zero, zero, zero coordinates of the world as the, uh, as the uh, center point for rotating. That's why it's all messed up now. But okay, so angle is in the degrees. Now, I will take my remapped values and connect them to the angle input, right? Like so. So now it looks like this. Kind of cool, but maybe no. Um, and that it looks like this, you know, all over the place, because we're still using, even though we're using the correct degrees, but uh, our center point is locked to zero, zero, zero coordinates. And thus every circle is rotating around that point, uh, which doesn't make sense. We want the circles to rotate around our center points. So for our center uh, of rotation, I will be using that average, uh, where is it? Where is my panel? Yeah, there we go. I will be using that uh, average output of the average node that we have, where, where we have every center of each panel, right? So I'll be using an output from that and I'll be connecting it to the center point of rotation. like so. And the last value, last, last, this, <laughs> the last value is axis of rotation. And by default, it's uh, set to Z, uh, val uh, Z, Z axis. And I don't want it to be Z. I actually want to rotate it around uh, X axis, I think. Let's just see. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll choose one of the, let's say this guy here, this, this panel here. I'll be looking into this panel and I'll be just looking at how it rotates. So if I have X, uh, so that's just unit X, you know, just, just X vector as my axis. Oh yeah, that's much better. 
It's just going to be rotating like a regular uh, like ventilation window for a, uh, a cruise uh, ship. I guess these days we, I'm not allowed to talk about cruise ships. Anyway, uh, we're, we're, we're making windows like that now. So that's all that we needed to do. So we have our Rotate 3D here. And we have our uh, external panels, which are, uh, come on, which are here, right? Now, uh, like external uh, perimeter of the panels. To not have a lot of like crossing wires, I will be creating an empty curve container again, curve container, and I will be, uh, connecting the join curves component with this curve container, like so, and using flatten. No, I will not be using flatten, sorry. I'll be using simplify on the curve container, like so. So you just right click it, choose, it, choose simplify. So again, there we go. It's connected like so, right? Make sure that you do this uh, simplification, simplify. And I will drag it all the way here, right next to my rotate 3D, so that I have here my inner circles and my outer rectangles. The problem is, that if now I check the data tree structure with a param viewer, 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 whew, English. Um, if I check the data tree structure, I can see that it's all uh, here, it's just a single branch. But if I check it here, it's going to be a lot of branches, right? Which means that it will, Lofting or anything similar to that will not work. I will need to uh, figure out some way on how to match up uh, these two data trees. And a way to do that is um, by just saying, take every circle that you have here in, in, in this rotate 3D list, take every circle and put it in its own data branch, in its own list, right? And to do that, uh, all we need to do is right click on the G output and choose graft, like so, right? And now at least, so I choose the G output and I choose graft, <coughs> sorry. So now at least, um, all of the, the amount of branches that we have is the same, but the problem is that the data trees don't look the same, and that is because here it was simplified, meaning that it doesn't have any additional zeros. Every, every branch just has a number zero, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And here every branch doesn't have that. You know, every branch has a bunch of zeros. So I need to get rid of those zeros. I can do that by just right clicking on the G output and choosing simplify as well. And now both of the data trees match up, meaning that if I use loft, and before, uh, yeah, before using loft, I will be using merge. So, so I will merge these two, like rotate 3D output and, uh, and my uh, curve output into the merge. So I'll be merging them up into one stream. And then I will be connecting them to loft. Ew. Uh, I hate loft. always makes this kind of a crappy uh, wait where where's the chat 
if yours is lagging, it means uh, the resolution is too high. Um, the, the, the resolution that you're using is too high and there is, you know, it, it is a lot of geometry that is being created for sure, right? So uh, there's, there's no real way about it. But one thing about loft, let me try and fix it because right now the loft is not that nice. It's all messy. Um, let me see. And that's better, a little bit. Hmm. Not that great though. Yeah, but besides loft, we don't have any other uh, any other solution. So to make it a little bit better, what you can do is you can right click on the O. Um, okay, so for those of you who are lagging out, the divide where where we div divide it up the facade into panels. So the divide. Uh, choose smaller numbers for U and for V. And then it will lag less. Okay. And for loft, um, let's see. Um, so for loft to make it a little bit nicer, you can right click on the O uh, input of loft. You can go to loft options and tick mark the align sections. And then choose commit changes. It will try and align them a little bit better. Uh, well, it's actually not that bad. Okay, it's not that bad. Um, it's just me. Um, so, moving on. From this loft, what we get is a bunch of separate surfaces, right? So we need to join them up into one poly surface. And if we just use join brep on the loft output, it will not work. Right. The output of a joint BREP will still be, if I look at it, it's going to be a bunch of separate uh, surfaces. And it doesn't work simply because uh, we are, um, simply because each of the, of the panels is separated in it, into its own branch, into its own data tree branch. So if we flatten, the output of loft, flatten, everything is going to join up into a single open bureau. The whole facade. Right? So now I can, uh, for instance, take this uh, BREP and bake it as default back into Rhino. I can type in show. Oh yeah, uh, except the, the, the freaking original surface. I'll, I'll hide the original surface. Uh, so, so I have my facade here done, and it's hard to see what, what the heck is going on, but let me just join it together with, uh, with the remainder of the building and just use EMAP on it to see it better. Right. So that's how it would look like. So in this case, the reflectivity, um, first of all, what EMAP tells me here is that it's not really clean and that's expected considering uh, how, how much we were messing with it. Uh, and 
usually it's never clean when you use rectilinear uh, surfaces together with, uh, with, with uh, circular openings that are twisting the, the, the rectilinear surface, but that's fine. Um, alternatively, you can just right click, oops, you can just right click and go to Arctic view and look at it there. And here it should be a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. One million circles. Okay. Um, let's let's see what what happens with the circles. Da, 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 da. I assume that happens when you rotate, right? Oops. Where is the chat? Oh god damn that, that there was a lot of text. Ugh. Sometimes the chat just doesn't show up for me. I don't know. Um sometimes it beeps, sometimes it doesn't. Um so so let me just go through the text. Uh, mm. Oh lagging without lofting. Um, oh yeah, okay, and you you have one million circles. Okay, uh, so Kaiser, first of all, um, if you need to make sure that average and NURBS output, like NURBS C output, that these two nodes are, uh, f the outputs of them are flattened. So right click, flatten, right click, flatten. They need to have arrows pointing downwards. Then it should stop being, uh, first of all, then, 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 then they do. They do. Um, can you print screen the, no wait, you can't print screen the definition. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Flatten, flatten. Don't scale the graft. Uh, <laughs> don't graft the scale. Um, here, where you have scale, don't, don't graft it. You need to graft the output of rotate 3D and then simplify it rather than uh, grafting the scale. <coughs> what it does in your case is since you have scale grafted and everything else is ungrafted, it uh, creates uh, a, 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 a multi like it takes the circle and it keeps rotating it. It takes the first circle and it keeps rotating it with all of the uh, distance values that you have. Then it takes the second circle and keeps rotating it also with all of the distance values. So you're multiplying the amount of circles uh, a lot of times. Yeah, you, you might as well be getting close to a million at that point. Well, not million, but maybe around uh, 10,000 or something like that. Um, Uh-huh. Oh, come on. Why is that happening? Uh, did you use the align? Um, 
if, if that is happening, uh, in loft options, if you right click, loft options, align sections, did you try using that? Anyway, um, I, I'll, I'm getting hung up on the, on the pattern, just wanting to fix it. Um, the nice thing about this is that, you know, you have this surface here, um, but what if, you know, I, I show, what if you also want it to be on another surface, right? So you can just, let's say I just bake this out, bake, default, okay. Right. I just bake out my lofts like that. And then I want it on this surface as well. So I can just use extract surface. I can just select it, right? So basically I'm just selecting just the new surface here. And I can, as long as it has four edges, because we're using four edges to rebuild it into a new surface, and I can choose set multiple curves. Oh, come on, and it's inside, inside out. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? So it does work on it. You can see that uh, Grasshopper doesn't give me any errors whatsoever. The only problem is that it's, it's kind of flipped and all over the place. So to fix it, I will type in flip, first of all. That doesn't help at all. Uh, and second of all, I will type in dir, D-I-R, direction. And I will be choosing universe, or, or wait, I, I will be just choosing flip. And seeing if that helps. That doesn't help at all. What the heck is going on? Swap UV universe or do we need to hit enter for it to recalculate oh crap yes we need to hit enter for it to recalculate my bad let me try this again so i just select the surface type in dir direction i choose flip and then hit enter <sighs> what's up today Something's very going very, very poorly today. Okay, instead of flip, I will just choose swap UV. Hit enter. What about now? Help, make the stop. Why are you doing this? Hmm. Okay, let me try that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I will just fix that in Grasshopper, I guess, because um, Rhino is being a bitch. Um, here in Grasshopper, the only thing that you need to do is where it says U count and V count, I will just switch these sliders, uh, switch up these sliders, right? So into U, <clears throat> I'll plug in, wait, now it's calculating yeah yeah so i'll plug in 5 into v and 30 into u and now it's fine when i change surface the divide domain doesn't work um This one, uh, what does it say? It 
Um, okay, uh, can you... Uh, uh -huh. Well, divide domain doesn't give you anything. Uh, like, it, it, it's just math, so it, it, it won't g give you anything. It's the subsurface that, that, that gives you the, um, the thing, the, uh, all of those panels. Does the subsurface show, show anything to you? Okay, good. Anyway, um, if, if that kind of a behavior happens where you've seen me like struggling with uh, flip and am I recording? Yes. Uh, struggling with uh, flip and uh, flip UV and re, uh, like reverse U and reverse V and so on on the surface, usually is even, you know, it's so much easier to just go into Grasshopper definition and to, then just change the freaking two sliders because Rhino is just doesn't care, right? That we're changing stuff in it. Um, happens but <clears throat> if, if you if you see something funky going on just change the, the these two sliders uh, you know cross them um, and then I can just simply bake this one out as well bake default okay height I'll disable the preview of it show and now I'll just hide the two original facades that I have here Hide those and join everything into a single single poly surface. And we did a cheese grater. I will, uh, Andrew. I will send the script uh, in, in 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 a few minutes because we 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 are done with the tutorial now. So I, I will just save that script and uh, we'll send it in. But oh, after Ruti 3D, there you go. Um, just a few notes here. Um, so so. We're done with this tutorial and this was the last one. I was thinking of, instead of having this tutorial um, to show you uh, aggregations and uh, let, me, let me Google that for you or not even Google that. That's primarily my, uh, my research is uh, within aggregations. Um, I'm very interested to, to think about how different shapes and forms come together uh, in a non-rectilinear fashion. And uh, I was thinking of introducing this kind of a, you know, uh, of, of giving you a script which you could use to grow these kind of shapes. But I've decided not to simply because um, these shapes all of them are using, you know, the, the, the same element. But the problem with them is that um, all of these shapes are not non-structural, meaning they look cool, uh, you know, chaotic and so on, kind of nice. Some, some of them are even, even look like crystals. But the, 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 the problem with them is that they're not forming structural loops, meaning they are not... Uh, at this point, they still cannot be used for architecture. And I think I have something here. Yeah, so this is like the, 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 the most, uh, the, the, the newest iteration of it. And it's uh, using the same shape to um, grow a, a structure along certain curves. And where you know, one curve ends and the other one begins, you branch out. Uh, uh, you, you force the structure to branch out, right? So, so with a few curves, it's, it's still pretty uh, boring. Uh, but once you add more, the behavior of it becomes a little bit more interesting because um, the way I wrote the script is that uh, I'm 
I'm not letting the structure intersect with itself, right? So as it's trying to grow and as it has uh, obstacles for it to continue growing, it's going to keep trying different angles of growth and, and keep trying to, to follow the curve as closely, each curve as closely as possible, right? So a grid becomes something very, very funky. Um, and so on and so forth. But again, the, the, there is a huge problem with this is that it is not structural. So instead of that, I've decided to just show you, not just show you, but to show you um, that you can indeed work in Rhino rather than in Grasshopper and produce, uh, uh, you know, produce a first pass at, on the shape, at the shape um, through Rhino rather than through Grasshopper. Um, I, I believe that's that's an important, uh, more uh, much more important. Um, wait. So now let let me structure what I'm going to say. So the task now is uh, you have received uh, five tutorials in total. Um, well, five different tutorials. And also the sixth one is, uh, was and still is your homework. And it's the two, 2D and 2.5D and game of life. So in total, you have uh, six different resources uh, to kind of work with. And all of them are very flexible. N none of them are kind of locked in place. You need to do this and this only. All of them are somewhat flexible. So for Friday, not for tomorrow, but for Friday, uh, you will need to have a 3D model of your first shape, of something that is going to be your, your first pass at, uh, at the form. Don't think of it as, your, as the shape of your building. It probably will not be that. Uh, it will change so drastically, but it is going to be uh, the, the, the first shape. No, it does not. Uh, it does not to be site specific. It needs to be um, it needs to be tectonic, meaning that um, if you do a lollipop shape, Right. If you do something like something like this, and then something like that, right? This is not a. Wait. Let me go to shade it here. This is not a good shape, right? So, so it needs to be tectonic. But it not, does not need to be. Oops, it does not need to be site specific yet. Uh, we will be looking into the site, and we will be kind of incorporating the site heavily into your. Uh, where's the chat? I keep. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we will be um, incorporating the, the the form heavily into the site uh, during our. Uh, third week of the workshops. Before that, it's just the shape. So think of it this way. Um, week one is deciding what kind of approach you will have to create the shape and creating the first idea, the, 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 the first pass at the shape with that particular approach. And all that we've done so far is show you six different approaches. Five I've shown you now, and uh, the sixth one is your homework, right? So you just choose an approach to, to generate the shape and you, 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 you make the first pass at it. By the end of this week, you will have a metaphor workshop 
where through through that metaphor workshop you will receive a lot of um, ideas uh, or you will generate a lot of ideas on how to work with that uh, shape that you have <clears throat> further right how to elevate it in, uh, to to a higher level then week two of these workshops is going to be you um, doing exactly that elevating that shape meaning you, you will be creating let's say version two of, 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 of that form which is still not site specific right so well it, it will start becoming a little bit site specific at that point but still not completely anchored in the site not at least not physically um, but you will be creating second version of that shape where um, it's going to be uh, enriched by certain aspects that that uh, you will find during the workshop that we're going to have on friday and also on the technical level uh, the shape that you will make will need to be 3d printable and what does that mean? Uh, 3D printable means it will need to be a single closed mesh. Like so, so a mesh that does not have any openings. Uh, can you have it as a NURBS polysurface? Yes, absolutely. But as a NURBS polysurface, it will also be, need to be a single closed NURBS polysurface. So that's at technical level, at idea level, it will need to. Um, be done at a higher a slightly higher detail than the shapes that you will come up for uh for for this friday and then workshop the third week of the workshop is going to be you uh taking your single closed polysurface clean shape yeah you can you just select it and type in what <laughs> And it's going to say that it's either an open mesh or a closed mesh. So for the third uh, week of the workshop, uh, we will be taking your single closed meshes or single closed polysurfaces, doesn't matter. We will be taking the landscape and we will be merging them together in a very, uh, I, I believe it's going to be a very fun way a very experimental but very sculptural and very interesting way to work and hopefully by the end of these three weeks what you will have is you will have uh, a solid start of your form incorporated within the landscape in a very nice way um, and it's it's going to be something for you to start uh, working from and to start creating architecture from so what you're doing now is you're creating this kind of a do you know how sculptors work uh, the sculptors before they do uh, a masterpiece right they always do uh, 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 in Lithuanian it's called the black sculpture so so they always do this kind of a sketch sculpture before right? This kind of a lower resolution sculpture where they use huge knives, huge palette knives and so on to carve uh, and, and be brave about it, right? So, so they, they, they use that kind of a black sculpture, which is called, to, to carve out uh, in a very brave fashion. And once they have that, that you know, sketch sculpture done, then they uh, rebuild it or, or, or create a new sculpture in a very, very controlled, very, very precise fashion because they have already made all of the uh, brave decisions with the, 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 the sketch rather than the original. Uh, so we're going to try and, uh, or we're not going to try, we are trying to implement that kind of method that during these three weeks, uh, you're going to be very brave and no geometry is important if you need it to, you you cut, cut into it you open it up and you play around with it and once um 
these three weeks are done, then we will slowly start moving into a much more controlled, much more precise way of doing it. And also um, at that point, we will start talking much more about space, architecture, uh, tectonics, um, structural performance, uh, structural detailing, uh, and, and so on. Um, so hopefully that, that, that kind of shines a little bit of light over the, the, the process that we're going to have. Um, where, 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 where am I? Uh, stop sharing. There we go. So besides that, um, tomorrow is a day when you simply work, right? So tomorrow is a day when you uh, just work on the 3D model and, and, and come up with something nice for, uh, for, for Friday's workshop. Uh, me and Olga will be uh, all over the place with the master students tomorrow trying to kind of save the ship from sinking there. But, uh, but, but, but uh, we will be somewhat online and somewhat around to help you guys out if you get really stuck and uh, need assistance. Mm, what else is there? To say, of course, I will be sending out an email um, on Thursday morning about uh, what you need exactly to have for Friday. But think of it this way. It's going to be a 3D model and it's going to be a few uh, print screens of the 3D model, right? So, so screen grabs. Um, what else? Do you have any questions? Is, is, is anything not clear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My computer lagged right before you said something about script. So uh, first of all, Friday is going to be here in Zoom. Um, we can't, uh, we are not allowed to, to be in the same room as you guys, apparently, uh, which is super. Uh, so, so, so Friday is uh, through Zoom. That's fine. Uh, we have already restructured the whole uh, metaphor workshop, so it's going to uh, to work out uh, easily. Hopefully, <laughs> knock on wood. Um, and right before I said something about screens, your laptop, uh, your computer lagged out. Uh, Oh, the screens. Uh, so, so what you need about uh, what, what you need for Friday? I will be sending out an email. Uh, so, so keep an eye out, out for it. But three uh, D model uh, and uh, some uh, print screens of that three D model for, from different angles. Okay, I think we're done. I, we need help. <laughs> the Zoom best way to reach you. Oh, if you need help, the Zoom best way to reach, uh, reach us. Um, yes, but always check uh, right next to our names. If, 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 if there is a, <laughs> send an <out>. L. <laughs> <laughs> right next to our names in Zoom, if there is a, um, a red uh, camera. If there is a red camera, that means we're currently in the meeting. And then we won't be able to help you if we're in the meeting. Uh, but we will be uh, logged in to Zoom uh, throughout Thursday. Well, most of Thursday. Uh, if we need help, don't. Should the painting be rotated minus 90 degrees? 
No, I like it that way. It's fine. <laughs> Should it though? No, it's no, no, no. The the signature is here. The, the, there's the signature. No, it's it's it, it should be there. <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> anyway, okay. Everyone's losing their minds. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's finish up for uh, for today. And if you'll need help, yeah, contact us either through Zoom or through email. If uh, you see that we are in the meeting in Zoom. Once we're finished, we will just check the emails and answer you there or call you on Zoom. Take care. Bye.